So, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, after lunch, and then you join my session. So, um, welcome. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. As this uh, talk will be beginners friendly, so uh, I won't dive deep down into the detail of like how the package work and all this. Um, if you are into something really technical, I'm sorry, maybe lagging, but I'll tell you uh, how I use the package and uh, what is the like, theory behind and how I use it. Just some tips uh, for people who may be um, using it in the future. And it's like a, it's a you know, pie data style, you know, uh, like, uh, so here, who is uh, kind of like identify themselves as data scientists, analysts, working with data? Yeah, great. So, uh, yeah, I hope you will find it useful. So, yeah, that's uh, you know, my, um, you know, uh, Twitter there and, you know, GitHub. And you, you will find the code on GitHub, actually. And also, uh, remember to uh, tag EuroPython. And now, uh, please rate my talk afterwards. So, thank you. <laughs> Okay, and then, um, yeah, I'm Chuck, uh, or you can call me Cherry, uh, or my friend does. And uh, I'm working in Hotel Bass. I'm organizing an AI club for gender minority, which is uh, in, in London. So, uh, yeah, I'm based in London. So, we are trying to promote, uh, a, you know, gender equality in, um, in the technology. So, we're trying to, you know, um, encourage and uh, empower gender minorities, like mainly women, um, who yeah, who is like struggling, you know, feel a bit, you know, um, not enough uh, support in the community, so we we'll try to help. Also, I, uh, I'm a member of uh, Python Sprints, so if you are, you know, if you are like me, like coming from London, and then uh, next week we will have a, a sprint uh, for uh, Pandas documentation, so which is for gender minority. So if you are minorities like me and you want to um, start contributing to Pandas, or other, uh, we'll have other events for other libraries as well. So if you want to contribute and you, you don't know how to get started, you, you're welcome to join. Or if you're super um, senior, you're like very experienced and you're welcome to help out as well. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, all, all of those uh, things clear. So why, why we are doing this um, like matching company names, like string matching and so yeah, I, I was having a, a problem at work. Like I want to match. Like there's a list of companies which is uh, my 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 company's client, and I want to find the um, some similar names in it. But uh, of course, it's not limited to to my company, right? So um, like why why we why we want to match the name? So um, I have some uh, kind of uh, funny encounter on on Facebook actually, because um, somewhere in China I saw this. Pictures <laughs> mm, looks familiar, right? Uh, okay. Uh, what about this one? Oh, it's, it's, it's giving credit to a company in USA, obviously. Um, and this one. <laughs> okay, I, I, I have to quickly skip through it because it's a very nasty typo there. <laughs> so, um, if I want to see, if, like, okay, if I have a list of company and some of the company are like those, I want to see. Oh, are they the one that the, the the coffee shop that you know, like we drink coffee and we buy cakes and uh, are they the same? So, um, can you tell me like uh, what 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 would the result of those? Yeah, all fours. So I can't do it like that, right? Um, everybody knows that. Um, so maybe I can be smart. Uh, maybe I can use some um, string methods ah, to do it. So uh, who knows? Like um, what what string method I could. I could use to, to make the first one become false, like to do some modification. Yeah, up or lower. Uh, how about the second one? Uh, there are different ways, but uh, I, I, I found a way to do it, uh, which is, um, uh, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> and then the, what about the last one? Let's, let's, let's talk about the last one. Uh, yeah, I will show you the thing that I could, Think about like yeah, I replace the space bar and uh, I, I just <laughs> trim the S. It's a bit stupid, right? Uh, if what if it's not like Starbucks? It's like Starbucks exclamation mark, then, then it doesn't work, right? So, um, so we need something else to kind of find all these similar strings. So I, I, I kind of uh, know this one. It's called fussy matching. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's just a funny name. It's like fussy. You think about you know like cute animals like they're like. But um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's Wikipedia's definition. It's too long. I, I just don't don't like to read long um, 
paragraphs, but actually basically what it means is just matching two strings that is not exactly the same, but we want to find a way to score them, how similar they are. So voila, we have something um, very you know, um, smart coming up. So this is um, kind of uh, named after a Russian scientist. Um, I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, if you, uh, you speak Russian, then um, yeah, you can tell me. It's uh, but but near um, Levenstein, is it correct? Le Le Levenstein, yeah, Levenstein is distance. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still doing it wrong, but uh, yeah, forgive me. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically telling uh, there there will be a, uh, a number, uh, uh, you know, an integer that says like, oh, how much alternation I have to do from changing a string A to string B. So if I delete one character. There will be one, one change. If I change that, like for example, from an A to an E, that would be also one alteration and or, or, or adding something. So uh, yeah, so if it's the, if that number is bigger, this uh, the Levenstein distance is bigger, then the two strings more different. So it sounds very intuitive, right? So how can I do it in programs? Uh, of dynamic programming, it sounds smart, right? <laughs> but actually, uh, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I got this picture. Uh, it's not my picture. I should give credit. It's uh, from from uh, from GitHub. Actually, there is a, a JavaScript library that is uh, implemented this. But uh, of course, I'm using Python, so I'm I'm not talking about um, that packages. But uh, yeah, if you if you find my slides and you can click on it and you will go to there and like uh, have have a look at their GitHub repo. So uh, this is the the, the graph, right? Uh, you, uh, or matrix. I I don't know how you should call it, but uh, you can see like from the you know, top left hand side, the is zero because uh, there's no change. And then if okay, we just go from one um, one character to one character. So the first character they are the same. So if you um, so basically, uh, you don't need to change anything, so they will be the same, right? Both S. But you can see, like, um, for example, if you, I go one step to the right, I'm adding one word to to, to Saturday. So uh, if I spell Saturday, it would be adding one word each. So it would be uh, you can see the first line is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I go down, it's like adding words to to Sunday. So you can also see that as well. Um, so it's uh, from zero to 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 that uh, to that uh, character do that word. So um, what if I have, uh, now I have two, two characters. I have, uh, for example, Saturday, I have like S-A. If I want to change it to like Sunday, so it's like S should be S-U, right? So I have to change the A to the U. So if you look at the intersection of the, the A and the U, that would be one. So you have to change one character. So this is what uh, this is. Uh, and of course, it's dynamic programming, so it's like, so it's, if you uh, you have first you have the small problem and then you can expand it and until the end, and at the end you can find that the minimal change is free and then you can work your way back up and find the the path the minimum path that you have to do to change Saturday to Sunday. So um, yeah, you can see there's uh, some transformation, some deletion, uh, which yeah you can see from the graph. So. Uh, I'm not talking about that uh, repo because that is in uh, Java. Um, so Java, JavaScript, I believe. Yeah, JavaScript. So uh, yeah, and um, so I'm using uh, uh, Python. So which is I can use uh, Fussy Wussy, which is also a funny name, which I love. <laughs> so uh, why I use that is like um, why what, what what is it like uh, better that I really like it that much is because it's not just using the Levenstein distance that you know I can do compare two strings. It also provides some uh, very uh, some features that's very useful. For example, um, simple ratio, which is uh, I can. Uh, which is the basic one, right? Uh, so that one is, is not magic, that's basic. But uh, we, I, we can also have part, uh, part partial ratio, which means that uh, if I have, for example, two words, that, uh, for example, my name is like, I'm Chuck, but also if you include in my uh, middle name, like Chuck Ting. So Chuck and Chuck Ting, are they the same person? Is it both me? So if I use partial ratio, that would be the same, right? Because Chuck Ting also contains Chuck, so it's also my name. So that would give you a, a score of 100, so they are the same. But if you use simple ratio, it won't be the same, because you have to add Ting at, at like four characters to become my name, right? So um, so that would be give you a lower lower score. Uh, for this fussy wussy uh, matching score. And also we have a token sort ratio, which means that I token each word, 
and then they can change the, the, the order. For example, my name, like my name is Chek Ting Ho, um, which Ho is my surname, but uh, in, in Chinese, it's like in Chinese, we, ha we have surname first. So my name will be actually Ho Chek Ting in, in Chinese. So um, yeah, so it's the same person, so uh, I have to use a token sort ratio. So that would be actually still like the three, three names are the same, so it's just the order has changed and because you know Western culture you usually put your first, give a name first and then your surname, but in Chinese it's different. So yeah, it's, it's still the same, it will give you 100. And then uh, for token set ratio, that would be like, uh, for example, my name, if you, because like for example, you will skip the middle name, right? Usually if, if I put my first name and my last name, there would be Chuck Ho. So, um, yeah, then that would be, you know, is it the same as me? Like, and then it would do the token ratio, and also if it's a subset, then it will also pass. It will also give you a, a hundred score. So that's very useful. It depends on the use case. Actually, it would really um, help you out. So uh, you can check out the GitHub repo. Uh, it's uh, done by um, Sitki. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very, very popular uh, library. I, I used it and I really like it. So um, you can go there, check it out, and they have a blog post about you know what what the difference between these four as well. So yeah. Okay, so my use case now. Um, okay, now um, I have the company data, but of course I won't use my uh, my company's uh, clients' data because uh, that's confidential. So I I download an example data set which is from the. Uh, uh, open license public uh, data database, which you know all the UK companies, if they are, um, they have limited li liability, they have to have all this uh, information in public, so they, uh, you can you can download it. So uh, is there's a lot of company actually in this country. So uh, I only use Cambridge because a lot of uh, startups going on there is very exciting. So, uh, but still, there's a lot of company in that list. Uh, it's like 15k, so quite a lot. Okay, so um, check one, because uh, if I just use Fuzzy uh, Woodsy and I just check all these names, are they the same? Uh, actually, a lot of them will be having a high score because there's some words that you know, all the company use, right? It's, you can have, um, you know, I can have my own, you know, uh, track thing company or whatever, and everybody can set up a company with the name company. It's a very common, uh, Got my idea, right? And and limited is like very common as well. So um, yeah, that would be less meaningful to match them. For example, if it's talking about my um, clients, there are a lot of them because uh, my company is doing travel, like uh, hotel rooms and stuff. So a lot of my clients they will have travel in the name, so which is less meaningful. So um, yeah, what I do is like I use a, a small trick that you know I do all this. Uh, you know, count dictionary and I see what's the 30 most common words. Actually, this is also useful in doing some NLP stuff as well, so um, recurring theme, so <laughs> yeah, very convenient. I just used the your same idea to do it. Um, okay, and then another thing is like I came across a problem because uh, there's, remember there's like 15, 15, almost 16 case companies. So there's a lot of number. If we match each single one of them with the others, that would be a lot, a lot to compare, which I, I don't want to have a big project, right? I don't want to have like a, a GPU and all this stuff to train if like to calculate for, for day. No, no, it's not gonna work. So, um, uh, and you know, Python is not super fast. So, <laughs> uh, uh, that's why I am trying to use some trick because I'm thinking about, I want to match companies the name that's highly similar. So I would just assume that they won't make the mistake on the first character. If like, if for example, if somebody make an account, type, type in a company name, but made a mistake, have a typo, and oh, oops, it's wrong. Or I will open another account with the right name. So basically a person opened two accounts with highly similar names because I, I made a mistake on the first one. So, um, so they, uh, I just assume that they won't make the mistake in the first character because uh, that's very obvious. Usually you type something, you just have a look at it. You, if the first character is wrong, you just catch it. So um, yeah, that's the trick that I do. That's good enough for me. Um, okay, so remember I, I found out the 30 most common words, right? So when I do for C matching, I would um, deduct 10 points. It's like a game, right? It's like, oh, because you have this word, I'll just deduct your points. Uh, because, you know, um, they, 
because uh, I'm, I'm, I will check the score at the end, right? I will check if it's having a high score. So if they just uh, have a score, this, this pair having a score, just based on they have a common word, so it's not valid. So I have to deduct the score, so to make them to balance it out. Uh, is it a is it a very good trick? It's, uh, it, it may not be, but uh, but it works and it's very simple. It's very easy to uh, implement. So uh, that's why I do it. I think uh, in a lot of cases it will work. Um, yeah, it sounds very simple, but uh, it works. Uh, so and also I'm I chose I choose to use this uh, token sort ratio because um, if somebody, for example, if somebody type in the names, if they Swap it, so they should they should be highly similar, right? So I'm co considering it like uh, in in a word, word by word. So I, I choose to use that. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay. So at the end, what do I find out using that data set? You can go to my GitHub and check it out. It's just a very um, Jupyter notebook. It's just very um, simple and. Uh, as, a, as an example that you could, you know, just simply reference back. So uh, this, uh, the thing that I caught, like with they, if they score um, a score that is like more than 85, then they would be considered the same. So what are they? Usually they would be like spelling mistakes because they, they would be like a, a two names that's different by, you know, for example, just an S, like the Starbucks and Starbucks, or um, they would be, Having one less L or one less I or things like that, so uh, it's it's uh, it's very easy to make those kind of mistakes because um, if it's an I and an L, obviously if you look at it, then it's, it's very easy to miss. So it kind of makes sense uh, for human typo. It may not be, but I just suspect that that is. And also number three instead of number two, so that one it will be. Um, I would suspect somebody having multiple accounts, right? For example, if I sign up with an account with a username, I already did it last week with my name, and then this week I won't have another one. I'll just put a two at the end. So that's the logic. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So um, and also um, there would be, like for example, a, a abbreviation. You know, there there could be some changes. So um, that could be intentional. So um, I won't suspect that would be a. a uh, absolutely a human error. And um, also, uh, that, that's the, the funny thing that I found, because like some names, they actually, uh, they look similar, like the one that I, I have here, but they are not just different by one character. It, it could be they are just like two companies that's coincidentally having a very similar name. So um, that's the interesting one that, you know, I, I would love to investigate. You see, like, you know, um, for example, if, if they are my clients, I would maybe ask my colleague if, if they can, you know, talk to their clients and like, oh, are they like the same, is a still, still like the two accounts belongs to you? Or is it, um, you know, is somebody is like coincidentally having, having like a similar name? So yeah, that uh, we need some checking, uh, human checking at the end, but, um, but actually uh, I can show you, it's actually highly reduced, uh, the you know the the work that we have to do to find out if if it's um, a typo or is it a uh, totally two um, clients because um, you see after I applied the matching so it's like uh, the the one that got caught that's like highly similar it's only one percent of the total and so among like uh, fifteen k that you have to maybe um you know, look at it, at least like you won't call all of them, right? You, I won't like, of course my colleague won't call all of the clients, but like by just looking at them, you can like, you, you still have to do like, go through the long list of, you know, like that much, like like 15,889. But uh, now I just need to look at 57 of them. So, um, and also maybe investigate in 57 of them. So it really ha uh, highly reduced uh, the work that, uh, you know, uh, you or your colleague have to do. So I think it's um, a really good trick. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, <laughs> happy matching. So I think I have a lot of time left, is it? And yeah, I just go through it very quickly, is it? <laughs> so, okay, so yeah, just took for, for you just a talk. ask questions and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, so we have time for questions.
So uh, the, the fuzzy would say use four metrics to to estimate if it's a match or not. What is the let's say the coefficients or the purity of these four metrics? Uh, you mean the like the token salt order? Yeah. yeah so four. I can actually. So they are doing it, they're actually giving it a score, like it will return a score at the end, which uh, if, it's, if it's perfectly matched or if it's, um, there's actually examples. Like for example, if like here, for example, the token sort matching, you can see like, um, let, let me make it bigger. Hmm. Yes, uh, but how it eventually generates this final score from that four metrics? Yeah, so basically basically what it's doing, if it's just, for example, if it's just simple ratio, it will be a uh, long time distance and then just, you know, normalize it and give it a score. If it's, you know, um, I, I haven't really like uh, checked in the code of this, but uh, it will give you 100 if it's a total match, you can see here. For example, if it's a par partial match, then it will give you 100 if it's a total totally match. So it's, um, it's by proportion as well. So if you have a longer phrase, then if it's the, the tolerance of the, the difference, it will be higher because it's by proportion. Oh, okay, so it's a, so you pick which one you want to use. It's not yeah. like eventually they combine the four to generate one score. Yeah, you can choose uh, which, which logic you want to use because uh, for example, if I, uh, if I apply this, in the simple ratio, it won't be it won't be perfect, right? So it's it's the it's the logic that you could choose. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have another question. Yeah. Uh, hello. So I was curious that Levenstein uh, only uses for letters. Uh, so does it work equally well in all languages, or are there some languages that it has problems in? And do people use techniques like combining it with a dictionary from a language to get better results? Actually, if because uh, it it doesn't um, it doesn't care what languages it is. It's the the idea is like it check characters, and if for example if it's not in English, if it's in French, then it doesn't matter, right? Because like if you have, uh, you know, if you have a word that is, you know, one character difference, it will give you a, a score of like a, a long time distance of one, because there's one character difference. So it it doesn't matter if it's a change of that character, if it's deletion or if it's adding one character. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of more of a question of what if. Um, suppose I've got two super big tables. And there are like World of Warcraft players from one server and another server. And I kind of want to know if there might be a match. And let's assume that these names are fuzzy. Not the best example, but let's assume that. Like you would then maybe uh, do a full join and then check if they are fuzzy wuzzy uh, matchable. But this won't scale very well unless you use some sort of heuristic. In such a situation, you already mentioned that you can take the first letter, for example, as a trick to maybe make things faster. Are there other tricks? Uh, for for two tables that's matching the names, mm, I would say that I, cause yeah, cause like uh, I haven't think about something else yet at this level, but I mean these these four like this already helps a lot because uh, for example if it's uh, two names that got you know, change in order, like the two words got changed in order, that would already uh, sort it out for you. But uh, yeah, if you want it to be super quick, uh, other than, you know, having the first character that match, maybe um, you can check the length as well. But uh, there is some limitation because if it's different by length, then if you kind of, if it's not change of character, if it's adding one character or minus one character, then you can't, you can't check that as well. So uh, there will be limitation. That's, uh, for me, it's just uh, my, my trick is more or less like a, a patch, like a quickly kind of, uh, yeah, get things done quickly. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, another question. Hi, here we are comparing one to one, but what if you want to compare one to a set? Let, let's say you have 10,000 names and you want to figure 
how this specific name is a rare, rarity to compare our uniqueness to compare to the whole set. Will you also use fuzzy wuzzy or would you go with something else? So if I, if I have one, uh, one, one name, for example, I have to match with the other thousand to see if there's a couple that is very similar. Is that what you mean? Um, no, actually, how, how, to, how would you measure how this name is unique compared to whole data ah. set? Okay, yeah, uh, actually, yeah, if it's, if it's, the, if it's a match, then, uh, or like, it depends on which one you choose, it will, um, the logic will be different. For example, if I want to be, um, you know, uh, if, if it's, for example, if it's, uh, I can, I can, for example, it's the same, I, I choose the token sort ratio, so if the name is changed in order, I would just consider them the same. So I can, I can apply, because every single one of them have a score, right? So if there is, for example, if there's a 10 out of a thousand, yeah, 10 out of like 10,000 that, you know, got a score higher than 90, for example, then I would say that it's not unique. So at least like all of them need to score at a point that is smaller than certain threshold, then you can say that it's different from everything else. So. I hope okay. that answers your question. Do we have any more questions? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So before you said you picked 85, if I remember correctly, as a threshold, right? For saying yeah, that's models. the threshold. Yeah. So how do you know that uh, like uh, matches with a score below 85 cannot? Uh, so you don't consider anything below 85? Did you run any tests like to to choose this parameter 85, or how do you did you pick it and? Yeah, yeah, I did run a couple of times actually. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, I, I didn't show it, but um, yeah, because uh, I, I, as this one, the 85, it gives me um, like uh, 50, 57 of them that is considered the same, like matching, right? So I, I look at them, but I can also, you know, change it. For example, change it to 75, and then it will give me, for example, let's say it give me 200, and then I can compare the two. Or if I have prior knowledge, knowing that you know all the mistake won't be you know won't be more than one percent, let's say, then I could you know have a look at the number that is got matched and then compare it to the total. Is it less than one percent or is it more than one percent? So I can kind of uh, I, I need to still fine tuning it. So that's the that would be yeah. It, it's not absolute. Yeah. Okay. Here I have another question. <laughs> Hi, um, did you ever try it on longer strings? So could you, for example, find a company name in a large text? Would that scale the library? A company with a... Sorry. So if you have a large text and you want to know if a company name appears in this text, do uh, you think you could use the library for that? Yeah, that would be, uh, of course, if, if it's a, a not so big paragraph, Maybe like you can do you can do some um, windows the slide through and then you can do some maybe like partial ratio and all this to see if if the company name appear in that window. But uh, I haven't tried that out. But I do think the sliding window would work if you kind of have a paragraph and you, for example, your company name is like in consists of three words uh, around normally a three word. Then you can have a window of you know five words and slide through and then to see. Uh, how many of them is the having a high partial ratio that you can kind of pick that chunk out and know that is a, yeah, it's a match. Yeah. And so the last question. Yes. Um, have you tried uh, phonetic algorithms? Because I think that would work very well for short names. Um, because you only use it for short names, right? Not for long corpus. Yeah, this one is for short. Uh, so what's the algorithm that you mentioned? Phonetic algorithms. Oh, phonetic algorithm. Is it? Oh, yeah, I, 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 haven't, I haven't tried that one. Because, uh, yeah, it's just because uh, I just tried this uh, fussy matching, but I haven't, I haven't tried that, yeah. Okay. And just to answer, maybe Finn's plateau or Finn's methods could be a good match for your question. Yeah. I'm afraid we don't have any more time for questions, so let's thank Chuck once yeah. again. Thank you. Thank you.